Hello, I'm Dr. Rosie Kuhn, and welcome to this series called I Want to Be a Better Coach. And I ask questions and answer questions that uh, people have asked me and or came up in my supervision group or came up in conversations with my clients. And it's like, these are things that I think we need to think about. I know I think about them. <laughs> and uh, hopefully these questions and or thoughts will be supportive to you as you're growing your ability, your effectiveness as a coach, or maybe you are a person like a bartender or um, a, 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 a beautician or any any place where you're talking to people and you want to be more effective as a communicator. These should help you out, I think. Anyway, see what you think. So I'm going to start out by sharing a little bit. I, um, I volunteer at our local food co-op the Orcas Food Co-op. And um, I love doing that once a week for three hours. Uh, gets me out. <laughs> I tend to be but a bit of a recluse. So it gets me out, gets me connected with people. I'm really enjoying the people I'm working with um, and get to see customers and help customers when I can. So uh, one of the people that works there, I'm going to call her Maureen. She trained as a coach, as a life coach. And yet she hasn't been practicing being a life coach. And so as we're talking about life and stuff, and she goes, you know, it's really hard to get clients. And it was like, wow, that's, that's, that's a big thing, you know? And, and that was what sh showed up is she's like, I don't coach because it's really hard to get clients. And it's like, I get that. And what's that about? Like what makes it hard to get clients? So I've probably talked about this before, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit differently this time. So with Maureen, you know, she said, I'd like, I, I said, do you want clients? She goes, well, not right now because I've got two very young kids and, you know, I've got a lot on my plate and responsibilities. So it was like, wow, this is really interesting. And, and I, I said to her, it was the only thing I did. And, and I wasn't even coaching. It was like listening. And because we're both kind of going in different directions in the store. It's not like we can have a conversation or she's not asking me for coaching. We're just having a conversation. So I just said to her, first of all, thoughts become things in a sense, the way that we think about things make things what they are. So quite often people will say getting clients is hard. And it's like, stop saying that because that creates it being hard. Uh, but at the same time, you know, the challenges that, that are arising for just about every single person who is attempting to get clients, whether you're a coach or, you know, even a minister who's wanting more people in the pews, there's a challenge of how do you engage and invite people into, into your practice. So I just want to talk about that a little bit. And part of the what came up for me as I was listening and, and kind of hanging out with, with Maureen and in this thing of, you know, you know, getting clients is hard. For me, there was a, a sense that it's the business transaction of getting clients. I'm calling it a business transaction. Getting clients is part of a business, if you will, um, as opposed to coaching as a way of being in conversation with people. And and I mean coaching by the way that we listen and are curious and 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 speak to what people are saying. So the practice of being a coach is very different than having clients or getting clients. So I think to me that for me, that's a really important um, conversation to have. <laughs> so here I'm trying to have it as best I can. So if I'm a if if I you know it's like what is it that you want if if I had an opportunity to actually have a conversation with Maureen which we'll do at some point because uh, I offered her that and she accepted my invitation but we haven't had a conversation a coaching conversation yet if we did or when we do I say I will say what is it you'll have when you have clients so when you have clients if there's and, and you've seen me with my magic wand which has disappeared in the moment, but we'll use this. If I wave my magic wand and you have clients, what's that like? What's the quality of having clients? Now, having clients, it's like, oh, now I'm 
got a business. Now I've got a practice. Now I'm making money. Now I've got some scheduling. Now I've got some organization. So I, I'm, I'm putting it out there this way in a sense, like if I have clients, then I can coach and then I can make money and I've got my business. And that's, that's in, that's one element of what coaching is about for me, because I'm all about the coaching part of it. Like what's happening when we're actually in the experience of being the coach, that's kind of different. So in a sense, if I have clients, then I can coach and then I can make money and I can be helpful to people. It's like, what if, what if you never get clients? Can you still coach? And the answer is yes, you can, if you want to, <laughs> or not. Uh, and some people, what's important is is making a, making some money at this. Quite, I mean, so many of us paid to be trained to coach, but few of us have actually had the experience of coaching others. So, in a sense, even Maureen said, "I don't have the confidence to coach people." So now we're talking about, she just brought that up just in, in the midst of things. It's like, okay, she doesn't have the confidence to actually coach people. So in a sense, having clients would be a little intimidating. Like, ah, what do I do? I've got clients. As opposed to, if I don't have clients, then I don't have to deal with that self, um, self-confidence self or trust. And I don't have to worry about failing or making it wrong or something bad happening. So quite often the way we think about things creates the reality we have. So to me, I if I'm coaching somebody about coaching, I want clients, talking to you, you want to be a more effective coach, like, well, I got to get clients. It's like, what's in the way of getting clients? In a sense, what's what's our context? It's all about context. What's true for you if you have clients? Well, now I got a coach and now I got to show up and now I've got to organize and now I've got to, um, what do I do with my husband and my children or my partner or my other job? And all of these elements of life, which are influenced when we have clients. And so quite often getting clients or having clients, it's not about getting clients. <laughs> it's about something else. That doesn't mean the clients are going to come effortlessly. It means that to look at what's in the way of those clients coming or what's in the way of you being open in an invitation to clients coming, that's kind of where we go. So this is a great coaching conversation for me to be able to say, so you want clients, do you want them right now? It's like, no, not ready. Okay, great, what just showed up? Well, I have this other job and I don't have a place where I can see clients and I don't have a really good camera and I really don't have a good computer and all this stuff that starts coming out that kind of slows down the process of where and how I'm going to coach and with what time and all those kinds of things. So I'm saying all of this. So you can ask yourself those questions like what's interfering with me having clients? And maybe you can say, I'm not ready. I haven't had enough practice. So that's a really big deal. So asking yourself the question, what's making this hard? It's always a dilemma. I want clients. I want to grow. I want to be a coach. And at the same time, I don't want to disrupt my 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 structure or my the way things are, or my husband's already, or my wife or my partner or my children are already upset because I'm not spending enough time with them. Whatever those conversations are, it's really important to see how they're influencing the fact that clients aren't coming. So if you have specific ways of you're dealing with this, leave a message in the comments below and share with us because people who are watching this all have that same dilemma. How do you get clients? And do you want clients? Do you really want clients? It's, it's, it's a bigger question than how do you get clients and how do you market? Because if there's stuff in your world, your reality, your perception, your interpretations of what is, like, for instance, some people think being a coach is like, ooh, and so they don't want to call themselves a coach. They don't want to tell people they're a coach. So that kind of gets in the way, too. So listen for all of these elements of how you're being that may be contributing to the fact that it's hard to get clients. 
because in a sense, those clients are pushing against you while you're pushing like, stay out, stay out, don't come in. Perhaps, perhaps. Um, I myself have been in practice for 20, almost 25 years. And I've never had a lot of clients. You know, I've written the, I've done all of the, you know, check off the list. I've, I've written the books. I've done obviously YouTube videos. I've got over 300 here on this YouTube channel. I've got my Facebook. I've got my social media. I've got my website. I've done trainings. I've done podcasts. All these things are out there that are supposed to bring clients to you. And I, I have enough clients. But it's not like there's this major influx of people going, I want what you got and I want to work with you. It's like, it's not like that. And I've come to get used to that. In a sense, I love my lifestyle, which is very influential. We're talking about not only like, what are you doing to get clients, but the vibration or the frequency or the truth about how you be in your life and how I be in my life. I'm all about lifestyle and I'm all about freedom, fun, and flexibility. So if I'm working too much, I feel a, an impact on my system. I get tired very fast. So I don't want a lot of clients. I like the, the flexibility of having time to write or do YouTube channels or you know knit or whatever I want to do. I like the freedom and flexibility. It has always been that way, even 25 years ago when I was 50, when I just you know started training it or when I started coaching. So um, really listening to who you are and what works for you in terms of the um, the number of clients you need or want or the client the amount of money you want to bring in and what that, that those are all conversations but it all has to do with this frequency and resonance of who you be and are you a resonance for or, or an invitation for people coming to you or are you in a sense saying I want clients but not now or not this way or not that way or whatever the not this is that we sometimes say. Good questions to ask yourself. Am I really open to having clients? So again, you know, it would be good to get coached by this or I am open to clients. And I also have a group for coaches where we work on issues that are part of who you be as a coach. So if you're interested in that, there's um, links below and see if you find something that might be valuable for you there. So having clients, if you can imagine yourself, this is something I do for myself. Imagine having those clients and what what is it that you're wanting by having those clients? Again, feeling, feeling the fun, the freedom, the flexibility, feeling the 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 uplift uplifting of helping people or supporting people or making a difference in people's lives. Um, those kinds of qualities of being are what I want you to focus on. This is an important part for me as a transformational coach is to not focus on the doing and or the thinking, but what's the quality of being you when you have what you want? So many years ago, I said five clients a week. That's what works for me. And generally speaking, I have five clients a week. Just because I put it out there in such a way that was like, this is really, uh, really what nurtures and nourishes me the most. Sometimes I have as many as eight or 10 clients a week, but mostly it's five. And, and that works with everything else that I'm doing. What's the quality of experience that you're wanting in yourself when you imagine having those clients that you want and the quality of life that occurs for you when you have what you want? It's a big question, but if you can go there, you can feel what sparks joy. You can feel what's infinitely pleasing and you can feel more into the direct pure intention of what you're wanting by being a coach. If, it, if it's about making money, be clear about that. If it's about helping or supporting or empowering people or getting to those moments where you both are in this zone, if you will, of connection and some aha moments occur for your clients and also for you, you know, what is it that you're wanting to experience by having clients? So for me, those are really, really important questions that are, and if the clients aren't 
aren't there the way that you want, how else can you experience and create that that sense of fulfillment, that sense of 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 joy and infinitely pleasing? How can you do that while you're waiting for your clients? Again, it would be good to get coached around this. And quite often uh, coaches don't want to get coached. They want to take their trainings, show me how to do this and, or work with a marketing person and marketing, market, market, market. But it, it's quite often only when we get in touch with our own stuff that we can make a difference. And, and I say this all the time to my business <laughs> clients. It's like the, the, your business will grow you personally. And if you're busy, if you're not growing personally, your business will not grow because whatever is here that's interfering in that, it's, it's not going to change until it gets addressed by you for you. So just saying. I want to share that while um, every opportunity, every conversation that you have with anybody, anytime, even my cat, my cat's up there. She's right there, Lucy. Um, every everything is an opportunity to have a conversation. Every opportunity is to notice who you be and how you be you and how you listen and who you be while you listen. Now, there was a, a fellow, Warner Earhart, is, who's actually one of the first individuals who co cultivated this field of transformational coaching or coaching in particular. And one of the things he said is, who are you in the listening of others? Who are you while you're listening to others? Now, that's profound. <laughs> it's like, uh, I don't know who I am, but if I'm listening for who I'm being, how I'm being while I'm with my cat or my friends or my sisters or who I'm being with, who am I being? Am I being authentic? Am I being manipulative? Am I being frustrated? Am I being pushy? Am I being um, trying to get something? Who? How am I being in the listening of others? So pretty deep question, but if you can look at that and go, wow, that's really important because how do you want to be a coach? How do you want to be a coach? It's not like, here's what you do. Here's how you coach. Here's the results. Here's the outcome. Here's the money. Here's the, it's that and who are you being and how are you being as you are, are in the relationship with your clients? That's what I'm all about. And that's what makes a difference for me is that quality of, of relationship with my clients, but also that quality of relationship with every element of my life. So, you know, you can be a coach while you're with clients or you can be a coach 24 seven. And in a sense that you're aware of how you be and the quality of what you're wanting to experience in you while you're being with other people. So for me, I, I mentioned this in a couple of series back, a couple of episodes back about the generosity of spirit. Generosity of spirit's really important to me. I wanna be generous with myself. And that doesn't have anything to do with my pocketbook. That just means how do I show up? And even in these conversations with you, I'm much more relaxed, I'm much more me and more spontaneous. That's how I want to be in my life. And that's how I want to be with you. And that's how I am with my clients. So for you to take a look at that for yourself, like who am I as I'm listening to my clients? Who am I as I'm listening to my mother or my sister or my dad or, or my students or my children, whoever it is you're listening to, your friends, are you listening from, oh man, I'm just so tired about that. Or you know, how we may be listening to parents or family members and are already in a state of don't want to hear it and we're not listening. We're in something else. And so to be able to be aware of that is a really good, important element, 100% to having clients and then cultivating more and more capacity to have clients. So again, it's I'm talking about it's hard to have clients. It's hard to get clients in a sense, but what is it the quality of being you that you're wanting to experience while you have those clients? So I hope that's that's clear why I'm talking about this.
because we got clients, business, money. I've already said all that. I'm just re reiterating. So what is it that while you're waiting for clients in a sense, while, while you're waiting or while it's like, it's not yet time to have clients, what can you practice so that you're cultivating those skills and tools that are so important to a relationship, a, a coaching professional relationship? What can you be practicing to, to, to be ready? So quite often, I don't know about you, but, um, most, a lot of people I talked to who trained to be coaches did not get much practice actually working with clients through their training program. It wasn't a requirement. They did some um, um, men, uh, team team coaching or you know people in the training program, but they weren't required to coach a certain number of people. So they don't have the experience. So you can get the experience by talking to anybody and everybody and listening to how you're being in those conversations again. Who are you in those conversations? Are you loving and open and generous and curious? Or are you resistant and avoiding? Or, you know, I'm trying to get a client. I'm trying to get you as a client. Like, do you want to work with me or not? Got to, uh, that, that kind of energy. Clients are individuals. People can feel that sense of fear or desperation or I want something from you. And can you be in a conversation with a person without wanting something other than just being and asking questions, being curious, being in the conversation without any agenda. It's, it's, it's big work, but this kind of practice can support you and empower you to, um, to draw people to you. So in a sense, you be a, be a good listener and a, a person of, you know, just not any agenda and people are more attracted to you. I says, I, that's my thing. When people have agendas, they, they kind of, I go, uh, see you later. But if I can feel their generosity and their genuineness, it's very nice to be around them. And if they say something like, well, I'm a coach, it's like, oh, that's really cool. Tell me more. So that's what we want. So while you're waiting for clients, practice your listening, practice curiosity. And what I mean by curiosity, just be curious about people, whether whether you're passing them in a store or whether they're your students or children or friends or like, see how you're being curious or not being curious. See how you can ask questions in a way that engages the person with who they truly are versus again, a second agenda of maybe I can get them to want to coach with me. It's like watching yourself ask questions and be curious, truly curious. You know, when we when we meet somebody, we kind of have an infatuation and fall in love. We're very fascinated with these people. And we're fascinated until it's like, ah, eh, not fascinated anymore, perhaps. Or we're fascinated for the rest of our lives. But that level of fascination is, to me, a, a foundational element of being an effective coach, is I'm fascinated by how my clients are cultivating this reality that they exist in and how they can move from where they are in that existence to something more empowering. And I'm fascinated by that. And if you can, I'm encouraging you to grow that capacity for curiosity and fascination. So you can go, wow, that, I find that really cool or really interesting. Tell me more. People wanna talk about themselves with somebody who really wants to listen. Now, if you're still trying to get clients, you might want to look at that and go, yeah, that might get in the way. If a person wants to work with you, they'll say, hey, are, can I work with you? Are, do you have room in your... You can do that. You can allow that. It takes some trust and faith, but you got time because you're not building your, your clientele now anyway, in a sense. Uh, and you'll, you'll find that uh, getting clients isn't hard at all. You can just see where you're resisting or where you get in the way of having clients. Now, again, I don't have 50 clients. I don't have 25 clients. I have five clients in a sense, five to 10. But the people that I have keep coming back. I work with people who over a long, long time, 10 years, a decade, even longer than that, 15, 20 years, I'm still working with the same people, not consistently, but they come back because they know they're going to get that level of listening. And that's what I want for you. So 
practice listening, practice curiosity and being fascinated, practice seeing where you are going, yeah, no, don't want to work with that. Don't want to have that conversation. Don't want to like where you're turning it off. Notice where you're turning it off. Not that other people can't come, aren't coming to you, but where are you turning it off? The last thing I want to say while you're waiting for your clients is it's, there are tons of opportunities to either get a job as a coach. There's a lot of companies who are hiring coaches. So if you have your certificates, you're hireable to get a job as a coach. Um, second thing is there are a lot of opportunities to work with people who are underprivileged, who, who, who want a coach or need a coach, but can't afford a coach. So there's a lot of opportunities to volunteer your, your time and your, your abilities and your expertise for people who can't afford it and, or at this point, aren't ready to afford it. And the more that you can practice with people, then then you're going to be more effective. And those people are getting better. I'm saying that their, their life is improving because you're in it and you're improving your skills and you're getting more committed to what you're really wanting to do here as a coach. So look for opportunities to talk and, and uh, gift your, gift your services. I gift my services a lot because, because I can, because I want to, because I, I want to coach. I want to coach, so I'll give it away for free when I want to give it away for free. Not all the time, but I have people and I go, I want to gift you a session because I love to coach. So look for opportunities where you can gift people your, your, your expertise as a coach, whatever level that is. Uh, it's also, um, you can let people know on uh, social media or a personal letter or however to say, hey, I'm really serious about developing a, a, a clientele of, of, uh, of cl a clientele of clients. And um, I'm looking for people who would be willing to coach with me for three or four sessions pro bono. And if you're somebody who'd like some coaching or you know somebody, you know, give me a give me a call. I'd love to love to work with you. And that's that place too, that you're growing your capacities, you're growing your self-trust, you're growing your expertise, you're growing your capacities and your, and the evidence of your abilities to make a difference in people's lives. And as I said with Maureen, she said, I don't, I don't have the confidence. So she's going no to clients because I don't have the confidence. So I get that. So how you grow your confidence is only through uh, experience. And that can be with uh, volunteering or gifting or just being in conversations with your family or friends or whoever where you can have a conversation. It doesn't have to be coaching them to an outcome, but that level of interest and fascination and curiosity. I'll tell you, everybody on the planet wants to be seen, heard, and gotten. And if you can practice seeing and hearing and getting a person and go, I get it. I get what you're talking about. They so appreciate that. We all do. So when we want to, when we see, hear, and get people, man, you got them. And one last thing, and you've heard me say this before, if you think about it, and this, I heard this from a fellow who teaches people to be videographers, free before fee, do those free um, uh, sessions. And at some point, it's going to make sense for them to start to pay you and or they're going to talk to people and say, hey, what are you charging? I'm going to tell Mel uh, Melanie about you. And she, she, you say, I'm charging $100. Excellent. Great. You're well worth that. So take every opportunity you can throughout your day because every opportunity is an opportunity for you to show up in your essence self and be there and uh, as a fascinated, connected person. And you know, then it's like, yeah, I'd love, I'd love to get clients and I'm good. I'm good. I feel fulfilled. Leave me a comment below if where you are in your journey on this uh, path to getting clients, having clients, all of that. And please uh, give me a some thumbs up if this is something that has been of value to you. And please feel free to share it with anybody that you feel would get some value from it too. All right. Well, that's it for today blessing to you. Lots of information below about coaching with me, my books, my podcasts, trainings, whatever you're interested in, potentially my website, 
it's all here for you. And if you have a question that you want me to answer specifically, there's there's a form below with a link and you just click on that link and ask your question. And I would be very happy to receive that. All right. Blessings to you. Bye for now.